Now moving on to the relationship between unemployment or employment and inflation. We've talked about inflation and how that can affect unemployment. We talked about how in times of high inflation caused by high aggregate demand, unemployment may decrease. And in times of low inflation due to low aggregate demand, unemployment may increase. And we talked about that in our lectures on inflation. And if you want to remind yourselves of that, you can go back to the lectures on inflation. And that could be a quick memory refresher. But now we look at the idea or the concept of how unemployment can affect the inflation rate. So we're looking from another perspective. Now we know that there can, or there can be three types of unemployment or the three different rates of unemployment. There can be high unemployment, there can be full employment, or there can be low unemployment. So we've got this idea of of employment and we know that the government's goal is to achieve full employment which is also called the Nairu or the Nehru which is an acronym for the non accelerating inflationary rate of unemployment And that's where the acronym comes from. N. Let's finish that. N A I R and U. So what this means is when full employment is achieved, which means no natural unemployment or no cyclical unemployment, I should say. So no cyclical unemployment. Inflation should be between the band of two to three percent. So it's not inflation isn't accelerating at, at a rate that isn't aligned with the government's goal of achieving this idea of low inflation. So that's what the government wants is this full employment. But we have to um, we have to understand that sometimes or in most cases the government isn't in achieving this goal or target of full employment. They're, they're either achieving high employment or low employ unemployment. And so therefore, they must use different aggregate demand management or aggregate supply management policies to alter this uh, the unemployment rate so that inflation can be non-accelerating. So let's firstly look at how high unemployment may affect the inflation rate. So again, we're coming back to this idea of the circular flow, we where we have households and businesses. Now we come back to this idea enough times to realize that households give labor to businesses, which directly affects the unemployment rate, and businesses produce goods and services. So we're not going to look at the other two um, flows because they're relatively irrelevant to this concept of inflation and, and unemployment, so production. And we know that the inflation rate is measured by the cost or the prices of the products being produced, so prices equals inflation rate, or the CPI. And so we can see that with greater demand for labor, businesses ought to have produced more goods and services. So we're going to see how high unemployment can lead to lower inflation. We also know that the aggregate demand curve is synonymous with this idea of the two or the three or the four or even the five sector flow models. So aggregate demand is C plus I plus G plus net exports. And we're going to assume a five sector model. We can take away um, net exports, which we make just a four sector model. Take away government spending, then we have a three sector model. Take away investment spending, and we only have a two sector model. But in this case, we'll look at a five sector model to, to develop a more holistic understanding of how businesses and households interact with unemployment and inflation. So when unemployment is high, 
they they demand fewer resources, or it, it means that businesses demand fewer labor resources because they require to produce less, and that's because of low aggregate demand conditions or low or poor demand conditions. And what this means is that because aggregate demand is low, demand pool inflation is low. So we can see when employment unemployment is high, therefore we're spending less because we have less income to spend. And because we have less in income to spend, therefore the cost or the prices of goods and services will decrease as producers try to lower their prices in order to sort of um, get rid of their excess stock. And we can see that the inflation rate will be lower in the short and long runs. Not in the short run, but in the long run, I should say. And we can see how this actually is shown by using the long run and short run aggregate supply curves. As we know, this is the short run aggregate supply curve where inflation stays constant and we have the long run aggregate supply curve. And as we know, when demand is low, it is less than the equilibrium amount and therefore business will move from point A to point B because that is the quantity demanded or at Y dash where Y star is the potential output and Y dash is the actual output and then businesses will contract to point C where inflationary rates would go down. So we can see with high unemployment the long-term inflation rate would actually decrease from pi 0 to pi 2 and this would result in the short term with a lower production rate. Let's look at the concept of low unemployment. So low unemployment means that either the labor resources are overutilized, so it means overtime, or we're hiring the structurally unemployed. So that means those already in the labor force and those who are cyclically unemployed are being hired already so that cyclical unemployment is zero and demand conditions are very strong and so that we're overproducing. And so this relates to this aggregate demand curve, so aggregate demand, this is one, this is two, somewhere here and therefore the actual output exceeds the potential output. And as you can see, there will be a expansionary gap. So low unemployment means cost pull and demand, cost push and demand pull inflation. So cost pull plus demand push inflation. So why is this the case? Because labor is an, an input of production, and because we we have such excessive aggregate demand conditions or very strong aggregate demand conditions that firms need to be producing more and when they produce more they're going to hire more labor and since labor represents a very high cost of production for firms to maintain their profit margin they must then increase the markup of products so to, to look at a working example say a t-shirt costs ten dollars labor costs five dollars now since they're hiring more labor or they require a higher greater demand for labor labor costs seven dollars they want to maintain the five dollars profit here on a t-shirt so therefore they will increase the cost of a t-shirt to twelve dollars and so they maintain the price of the t-shirt or the profit of the t-shirt so maintain profit and so what this means is when there's low unemployment inflationary rates would increase as a result and this is bad for the economy so now we can see that low unemployment would cause inflation to increase and that's why the government aims to achieve this idea of full unemployment so that there is a non accelerating inflationary rate of unemployment because as we know inflation deteriorates 
our living standards. So that's what the government wants to achieve, is for full employment to be prevalent in the economy, but also for inflation not to accelerate, so that our material living standards or our purchasing power are not deteriorated.